Welcome back to the deep dive. Today we're digging into something specific. You asked about the uh, combat operations of the Contact 12 Cephal unit. That's right. They're part of the Azov 12th Brigade's Artillery Reconnaissance Group, the BUAR. And their main job. Simple, but uh, incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. Find enemy artillery and take it out. Precision is key. Okay. But the real story here, based on what we've seen, isn't just the tech they use, it's how they use it. How so? It's this whole multi-stage process, but it functions like like one single system, very interconnected, very fast. Sensors, decision making, strike, all linked up. Right. A single synchronous system. That sounds very sure. So let's start at the beginning. Detection. How do they even find these enemy guns hidden miles away? Well, they have a couple of main tools for that initial detection. Yeah. First up, there's the American radar, the ANTPQ-36. The counter-battery radar? Exactly. Oh, yeah. It's pretty capable. Picks up artillery, mortars, even MLRS out to... Uh, around 24 kilometers. Impressive range. It is, but the really wild part is how it works. It tracks the shell going up and it calculates where it came from based on that trajectory. It figures out the launch point before the shell even lands. Wait, hang on, before impact. Yeah, think about that. That's not damage assessment, that's finding the shooter almost instantly. That changes the response time dramatically, doesn't it? Absolutely, it cuts down vital minutes, mm. but radar isn't foolproof, you know? Weather, terrain, mm. Things can interfere. So they need something else. Right. They back it up with acoustic complexes, AZKs. Acoustic. So listening for the guns. Basically, yeah. It's a network of specialized microphones spread out. When the enemy fires, the sound hits each microphone at a slightly different time. Ah, like triangulation. Precisely. The system analyzes those tiny time differences and calculates the exact spot the sound came from. Simple physics, really, but effective. Okay, so you've got radar data, maybe acoustic data. What happens then? Do they just fire back immediately? Not quite. They get what they call a, a catch or detection. These coordinates go to headquarters for a quick check against other intel. A cross-reference. Yeah. But then comes a really critical step. Verification. Or OHIA, as they call it. Reconnaissance verification. So checking it out first. How? It's drones. They send out a UAV team, often using something like the Mara 2P small, quick drones. To get eyes on the target. Exactly. To visually confirm that, yes, there's actually an enemy artillery piece at those coordinates, and it's not, you know, an old position or a decoy. You don't want to waste shells. Makes sense. Verify before you engage. So the drone confirms it. What's next? Is that when the shooting starts? That's when the final loop closes. The confirmed coordinates get relayed to their own artillery units. Okay. But, and this is key, the drone doesn't just fly home. It stays. It stays. It hovers over the target area and provides real-time fire correction. It watches where the first shells land. And tells the gunners how to adjust. Precisely. It guides the fire onto the target. It's not just spotting, it's actively directing the strike, making sure those shells hit home. Wow, so it really is a complete system. Mm -hmm. From detection, by radar or sound, to visual confirmation by drone. Right. And then that same drone guiding the artillery fire. It's all linked. That's the big takeaway. It's not just separate pieces of tech. It's a workflow, a cycle. Radar, acoustics, drones, artillery functioning as one uh, cohesive unit, almost like a single weapon system. They've essentially engineered out the delays between finding the target and hitting it. Exactly. The speed you gain when intelligence, the sensing part, is instantly fused with action, with that high-precision drone-guided strike. It's remarkable. It really makes you think. It does. And maybe that's the final thought for you listening. What does this kind of rapid integrated system where detection to destruction might only take minutes actually mean for the future? How does warfare change when that decision loop gets that fast? Something to definitely consider. The speed itself becomes a weapon.